this is the story of Bobby. I learned a very valuable lesson from Bobby. I went out on the storage auction trail and I was still evolving as a person, as a business person. And I ran into this guy and he was clearly 100% a racist. It was the kind of meeting where you can just look at someone, they can tell. He made no bones about his racism. He was one of the people out there. And I knew where he stood, I knew where I stood. So as we get him into it, I realize is that he's just gonna bid on units just to run me up. At first, that was somewhat disconcerting. Like, wait a minute, I'm bidding on this unit. You don't even want it, you bidding on it. Then I adjusted my mindset. I said, oh, that's the way you wanna play. You're gonna do it to me. I'm gonna do it to you. And part of this mindset came from my time in business environments. One of the things that we would do is we would throw a little salt in the game. There were business deals that we just knew we couldn't get, but we would throw in a bid just to make them adjust the winning bid. And I, I took that mindset, that warrior mindset, that competitive mindset to the storage auction game. So whenever someone would start that, I developed a reputation for going crazy. I would go after them for months, not a week, not a few sessions, but for months I would dog them. And this forced me to raise my game because this is a very expensive game to play. It was, you know, this is one of the things that uh, I was actually using spying units on my PayPal card because as the day would go on, sales would come in to give me additional money. And one of the things that I've noticed about people who spent big money at the storage auctions, they continue to spend big money at the storage auction. And I found out why. Proportionally, you buy these bigger units, you spend less money. Typically, people in the storage auction world bought upon their capacity to move. They, didn't, they were not value buyers. It's like, well, I can move this in the car, I can move this in my pickup truck, and I want to get a unit today. This is what they would buy. They wouldn't buy upon value. Like a 10 by 20, a 10 by 30, or a 20 by 40 that was full proportionally provided more value, but many people didn't have the means to handle that. So once I elevated to the bigger units, I began to see how the game worked. You know, you spend $500 on a 10 by 20, or you spend 350 on a 10 by 10, proportionally, your money went further with the bigger units. And this is what I saw the big dogs do. So I developed this um, money stacking system. I would have $5,000 in my pocket to buy whatever, and in my other pocket, I would have $5,000 for exceptional units. And this worked out very well because it kept me, it allowed me to play my little game of running people up, bidding on stuff, because typically, once, you, and this, this is about body language, once you be able to begin to read body's language, you could predict with a great deal of accuracy when they would jump off a unit. And I became very, very good at that. So this actually cut my cost but increase my fun. So Bobby and I would go at it all the time. He would bid on stuff that I was bidding on, and I would bid on stuff that he was bidding on. And there was about a six month streak where I hung him. And hunging, you know, hunging people is you when you bid on upon the unit and you jump off just before the other person jump off. This is called running someone up. And I became so good at it. And I would like take them for a ride. Yeah, yeah, no. And th they would like, because at this point, the unit had gotten too expensive. A lot of the profit would be gone. And for six months, I did this. Every time I saw him, yep, let's go, let's ride, let's do this, let's do this. And I remember, I'll never forget, it was a summer day, I think it was June. We were up in Alpharetta on the public storage trail. And Bobby 
who had, had never had any conversation from me, we just knew where we stood. He was a racist, I was black. We both had jobs to do. My job was to be black, his job was to be racist. But I made becoming, being a racist, very expensive for him. And this is where I learned something because at this public storage trail, Bobby comes over to me and he's like, hey, you won't bid against me, I won't bid against you. He ain't say much other than that. And I'm just like, whatever. Dude, this has been going on for years. Well, really in my mind for years, but really I had been lighting him up with a great deal of success for money, for months. You know, the units came up that he wanted to bid on and I wasn't really interested in it. And then there were some new people who were playing games and he got his units. And when there was a unit that I came, that came up that I liked, he didn't open up his mouth. First time ever that this happened. I was like, what? That day I did very well. I got some nice units. I was like, how long is this gonna last? And it lasted this business transaction because this was a business transaction. It lasted until I got out the storage auction business. He didn't do it anymore because I, I had done many people like this. There were many folks who I got rid of very easily because they were just like, uh, when I would show up at auctions, people were like, man, here this dude is. Because they knew that I would run them up. I would bid against anyone. I remember there was this uh, Dale Leasley. He was on the public, he was on the U-Haul storage trail, which was usually on weekends. A lot of people couldn't come out the weekends. And there was this big dog, Sam Yang. He, he would come out. And Dale actually said, you the only one that would bid against him. You the only one, everyone else would just lay down and let him get whatever. And I was like, you letting him get this stuff super cheap. You need to cost him some money. And that was my line of thinking. And because um, we went to the public, not the public, the U-Haul storage at Peter Street, there was this unit. It had marble top bedroom set in it. I had a feeling, because I, I just ran them up. I didn't want the unit. I had the feeling just the way that it was in the unit, it wasn't moved correctly. And there was a good chance that those marble tops were cracked because you couldn't really see them. They had them hidden. I think the people at the U-Hauls, at the U-Haul had hit them. And I took them up to $1,800 on this unit. It was three, it was a three for, it was three units. And he was bidding on that and I took him up to 1800 and I hopped off at 1800. It got back to me that he lost $500 on that unit. The bedroom set was trash. The washer and dryer was tore up, uh, essentially, there are many people who can't afford proper movers, so they move the stuff themselves and they damage it. They just they just jacked up that unit. This furniture wasn't worth what they paid for after they had moved it. You know, he stopped going against me. He would still bid every now and then, but he stopped digging in because he was like, cost him some money. And the, the name of this game is called competition. And this is one of the things that I brought to YouTube was a competitive mindset because I was out there competing with white folks and Asian folks economically. And one of the things that happened to me was I felt that I can compete with anybody in any level on any arena because one of the things that happens when you start to compete is things are revealed to you that average people don't see, people who don't go that high. I remember all the time there would be new people, it's like, man, I don't know why they're spending so much money for this trash, ha, 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 you know, the crowd would laugh and everything. And many people don't become technicians. I became a technician on how to read a unit. If the unit was packed correctly, that was one of the first things I would notice, like how, how did they pack this stuff? Was it torn asunder? Was it, you know, was stuff just shoved in there? because you have a bedroom set in there and the bedroom set's complete, that's $500. So you could bid $500 and the rest of the stuff would be profit if that bedroom set was properly put in there. So there was other tales that I would get into, but the storage auction business taught me pure, raw, unfiltered competition. And this is something that many people are afraid to compete with someone because I remember a friend of mine, he had went around some people and they told him that he could quote, 
own the black spear if he started doing what they were doing. I was like, didn't you feel some kind of way? Because see, when you compete, you compete for all of the money. You don't compete for just a segment of the money. You know, yes, black customers are good to have. They're wonderful. But I want black customers. I want white customers. I want Asian. I want all that money. And that's what a competitive mindset will give you is the backbone to go after all the money, the backbone to compete with people. Because anytime someone ever talked to me that way, I remember when I had a job and uh, I told this guy I had taken the postal exam. He was like, man, that's a great job for you. And I remember the sting of for you as if I couldn't do anything else, if I couldn't be anything else. That, that was just a problem for me. But I love the internet because the internet makes everyone competitive in whatever area they want to expert, get into. You, you could become competitive. I remember being part of a Facebook group that was $99. This group had 20,000 people in it. They were paying 100 bucks a month. I'm like, there, there's so many ways that you have to be, that you could be competitive. But once again, you must arm up. You must have a competitive mindset. You must have that little, that little nastiness, that little, oh, I'm going to get you. I'm going to win mindset because there is so much money out here. There is so much money out here for you, your family, your, your community. There is so much money if you're willing to go get it. If you're willing to compete for it. Look at Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone was almost bankrupt in 2009. He talks about it. He's going ahead and created Cardone Capital. He getting OP, OPM. You know, I've just looked at certain people who have been able to weather the storms because Grant Cardone's been out a while, Ty Lopez has been out a while. And you don't really see any new people getting to those levels because these guys were schooled in being in competition. You know, it, it's a very interesting thing. Uh, one of the things that I want to do and I want you to understand is you can compete. Don't let anybody tell you, you can't do this or you gotta be over here in this segment. No, 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 no. Go for all of the money. Get all of the money. Grab all of the money. Cause the money is, there's money out there with your name on it. Cause when I was in the storage structure business, that's how I used to feel. Like this unit's got my name on it. I would actually say that all, cause that unit's got my name on it. I'm gonna get it. And even before the bidding and people, that was risky because you know, people was just like, oh, you gonna bid on it. I'm gonna bid against you, right? And I had a long memory. Anybody who played those games with me, I would jump on a unit. And I had this one dude, he's like, man, get off this unit. You don't want it? I was like, but you were bidding me up over here at such and such on such and such day, right? You want to play these games? These games are very expensive, especially when you play with me. And I did that on that unit, and I did it to him for about four more weeks. He never opened up his mouth again on the unit I was bidding on. You got to make him pay. You got to make him understand that you're serious, that you are somebody, that you will not tolerate these little insults and little games. Because the thing is, I, I remember there were people who were cool with me. They were just like, man, so-and-so started cussing when you showed up. So-and-so just had something to say because they knew him. I had a reputation for being fearless would bid against anyone. And that is how you get the money. And also the internet, you know, most of those guys were just selling at flea markets, garage sales, they weren't using the internet. That gave me a great disadvantage, a great advantage over these guys. Cause a lot of them just, you know, about two, three years before I was getting out, a lot of them people were selling on Craigslist. A lot of them were selling on eBay, but I was selling on eBay and Craigslist from day one. You know how I got my first Gmail account? Off from an engineer on Craigslist. Because when Gmail was started, you just couldn't sign up for one. Someone had to send you an invite. Got that off Craigslist. I sold and bought a lot of stuff. I got a lot of really cool free stuff off Craigslist in the early days. It, it was amazing what you could get. This is the story of Bobby. This is really about him. He was a racist that I kicked 
his butt economically. And this should be a lesson for those of you who want to go out into the business world. Don't go out there saying, I can't do this or I can't compete here. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Compete wherever you want to compete. Sprinkle your hustle dust all over the deal. Because I'm here to tell you, the satisfaction when you make them bow down, the satisfaction when you prove your haters wrong, the satisfaction when the guy who, actually, this guy wanted to put hands on me because we were trying to look at a dude unit and he got like rowdy, rowdy, and I just backed up. I couldn't even see the unit. I bid on it and got it. I was like, you know, it didn't matter if you were seeing the unit, I was still going to get it. I told him to his monkey face that. That satisfaction, that look on his face, because clearly he, he was like, hey, man, you want to sell X, Y, Z? No, no, that's why I bought the unit, man. The satisfaction of winning, the satisfaction of being the man, being the woman, that is, that tastes so good. And you can taste that. For those of you who want to move forward, there's going to be a commercial. Yes, a commercial after this. Be sure to watch it if you want to get up on your game. Talk to you guys in the next video. Today, business school is in session. Learn how to make money, increase your wealth. One of the biggest problems I have is that people come to the YouTube channel. They'll see me and they want to get some, but they don't know where to start. So I have solved that problem today. If you're brand new, welcome. We're glad to have you. Look forward to serving you a long, long time. If you want to get this knowledge, if you want to start a business, I have created a blueprint, a roadway for you to actually start making changes in your life. Because this is one of the things that I have learned when I was doing 30 days to 2,500, I learned that there were some people who did better than others. And I was like, why are these people doing better than other people? What's going on with these people? And what I have discovered, and let's see. Let me go ahead and get that. What I've discovered is that people who came in with a business already, they did really well with 30 days to 2,500. Remarkably well. It was like mind blowing for some of them. Then there were people who didn't do well. And these were people who did not have a strong mindset or were not in business. So what I've des designed is for you to go through this pathway because essentially when I get someone who's brand new to the channel and they've never had a business, there is so much work that has to be done. I mean, I know there's folks on the internet that makes owning the business, running the business look super easy and it's not. And it's one of the most complicated things that you'll do in your life. But once again, people want the path of least resistance. That is not what we're going to have. So we're going to go here and we're going to go under all right, so this is where you start. This is the uh, blueprint. First thing you're going to do is get the hustler's mindset, pimp your mind for success. That's your free audio book. That's where you're going to start getting that mind correct. Then you're going to move to this. Money management is the basis of finance and wealth development. Before you get new money, you must optimize the money you already have. If you, as it was said in the part of the live stream this morning, if you don't manage a little bit of money well, you're not going to manage a lot of money well. It's the same person. The only thing that changes is the money. Look at the number of athletes who go broke 
because they've never learned how to manage money. They never learn how to compartmentalize, how to do the five checking account blueprint. They've not done that. So this is the, the first course you need. Now I keep telling everybody that. I've had a lot of people who take this course and they booked a consult because they wanted to know more. So this is the course that you need. Then after that, we're going to go to the third course, becoming the boss. You have to make this mental shift about being into a producer mode. So this is the third course you will take. And one of the things that I've done is I've priced this stuff so well that, you know, there, there is a few of you who are kind of sitting back, who are emailing me like, hey, I want to buy these courses. What's the best price you can give me? That never works. Those deals never materialize because they were required for me to sit on email and go back and forth with people all day. And it just typically doesn't work out. Uh, the courses are so economical. All right, this is what you're going to get after becoming the boss. This will be your fourth course, uh, the Power of Six Productivity course. This course will help you get stuff done. This is a habit that you need to develop, how to manage your time, how to get stuff done. When you start a business, there's going to be so many things to do that this course will help you learn how to get stuff done how to what's the priority what's not priority this course will do it for you all right so the fifth course you would get scripted days this is a life-changing course i think it's too cheap but i want you guys to benefit it will give you the power of written manifestation it will straighten out your uh bad habits it will put you on the path of productive success. It will teach you how to, you know, set up a morning ritual, set up an evening ritual, a lot of things. This will be the fifth course. Now, these five courses in the free audio book will build a foundation. When I was doing 30 Days for 2500, I had some students do amazingly well, and some students struggled. The people who did well already had a a business or be a superior mindset the foundational courses will give you the superior mindset let's say you're a person who wants to start a business but have no clue to where to start this next section is for you typically business success comes from practicing business skills one of the best ways to do that is by reselling you got to get your feet wet this is where you will start with the reselling courses uh this is a collection that gives you the storage auction book the pimping Craigslist stuff, all of this stuff to get you geared for resale. How to have a great garage sale, all that. Now, once you've gotten the first five courses, your next move will be 30 days to 2,500. This course is for people who need to learn how to sell and how to sell and set up business. It will be thought provoking. This is also a good course for people with established businesses. Remember how I told you the people who had already businesses did extremely well? So go ahead, you know, if you have a business owner, if you go through, because 30 days to 2,500 is a long course. It's going to take you about two months to go through it, but it'll be well worth it because in these two months, you're going to learn stuff. It's going to open up your eyes. It's going to create new shifts in how you think and how you do business. All right. Uh, the seventh course will be asking for the money, how to be an Uber salesperson. Now, don't get this course unless you have something to sell. Just reading a book or reading a book about sales without having something to sell is a waste of time. You need to actually read about it and put this stuff into practice. And once again, uh, for all you folks who keep asking me about the Luponics book, I don't know the name. Can't remember the name of it. All I know is it had a red and black cover. Can't help you. People keep like, man, it sounds dope. What's the name? I don't know the name, man. I don't know the name. Just had to put that out there. All right. And for the business owners, this will be defined as people making money and paying their bills with the proceeds from the business. 
you know, if you got like a side business or something, and this might be for you, but this is for the business owners. You should get the art of holding on how to set up your legal structure. Structure. If you're a business owner making money, you are a target and you will need to protect yourself. Now, for the people who want to save some money, I have a curated bundle with all the courses except the art of holding to get you started and get your business aspirations. So this is the bundle that includes most of the courses. There you go. So if you are new to the channel and you're like, hey, where do I start? That's the pathway. That's the pathway to get started because from a foundational standpoint, you need to establish the foundation before you get off into trying to start your business. Because like I said, you know, I, I got a ton of feedback from 30 days to 2,500. And if I had been thinking, I would have did this like way sooner, but essentially taking those lessons derived from that course, you got people who are not mentally prepared to start a business. It's, it doesn't mean that they can't become mentally prepared. It's just a process. It's going to take them a little time to, you know, like you got kids. All kids don't learn at the same rate. You got some kids who learn slower, and but they can still get there. And essentially, this is what you will be going through with the foundational courses. They will help you get your mind right. This will help you get your mind right. The DSL Chronicles, hell yeah, they ain't going to buy people. I mean, seriously, I, I, I pretty much ignore those folks because I've been down that path before. Typically, the people who are like, I want this course, I want this course, I want this course, and who want to talk to me, uh, the number one reason that people want to talk to me is to get permission to do what they think they want to do. This like, well, if Glendon thinks this is cool. No, you, you need to give yourself permission. You need to validate yourself. You need to um, believe in yourself. Mike Ellie, this ain't no theory. This ain't no theory, man. These courses have come from my business experience. There is no theory here. Let's see. Anthony Johnson, me and my cousin got busy today. We had a hard time starting that generator. It wouldn't start for our mobile watch, but we strung it together. Made a hundred bucks for a few hours. See, once you go through this transformation, once you get that first good sale that first load of money it becomes addictive it becomes very addictive now what i'm going to do for the you know starting next week there's going to be a lot of new training so i'm going to do a video probably sunday or monday talking about the new training and how you can get a hold of that now if you have never started a business this stuff is good for you especially 30 days to 2,500 and the money management course. I've heard, got a lot of feedback from that. People like it. It has helped them manage their finances because here's the thing. If you go ahead and start making a lot of money with your bad money management habits right now, it's the money's just, you're not going to get the best use of the money. You you need to learn how to hold on the money. And this is what the course teaches you. So, you know, next week we will get into um, the, the new stuff, but the new stuff will build on this. It won't be the same information. It'll be new information and more of it for business owners. I don't really have a lot of courses for business owners other than the art of holding maybe 30 days to 2,500 and asking for the sale. Those are only courses for business owners. Uh, a lot of this stuff is side hustle stuff, uh, beginning business person. So once again, just go ahead, 
you know if you're brand new to the channel you just found this welcome thank you appreciate you um this is what we're going to do michael gardner so it's true this guy i'm working for in real estate made like 15k and spent it all people that thirst you know that 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 thirst is a big big problem that build up thirst of you wanting stuff you want to live a certain lifestyle once again the money management course will help you with that let's see where we are cool because what on this is going to be a very short live stream because i'm going to take it down and i'm going to put it at the end of all the newer videos so people who are coming into the fold you know the new folks because i got a lot of new folks i get you know emails and stuff like hey glendon man i'm really excited i like what you're saying but where do i start this is where you start okay so all of the information is below you can start with your first five foundational courses then start going wild on the other stuff and very soon i will have some new information that will build on these principles that will take you to the next level so with that i will see you guys later